Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video I will show you how to implement a basic web server on an STM32 microcontroller. I have finally found a better alternative to the lightweight IP library, which is called Mongoose Networking Library. The key differences between these two frameworks are that, unlike lightweight IP which has an API poorly designed, Mongoose provides an optimized HTTP mechanism. It's much easier to integrate, you only need to enable the peripheral which lets the microcontroller connect to the internet, which is Ethernet or Wi-Fi module, and it also consumes less resources. Also, it provides an extensive documentation and a lot of support. But before getting into this, I would want you to know that I have started a free school community which is based on embedded systems and Internet of Things. By getting into this group, you'll have access to live calls and interesting articles related to embedded systems. We are already 16 members here, and you can, you can find the link in the description section. So let's get started. Open Cube IDE, create a new project. The board that I will be using is Nuclear F756ZG. So I'll choose it. Then I'll choose a name. And click Finish. Now I'll clean the pinout. Choose an oscillator and I'll set the clock speed to 216 MHz. Enable the serial wire in the debug tab, then enable the UART for debug purposes. And you must reconfigure the pins for this board because the PD8 and PD9 pins are directly routed to the STLIN port. Now enable the Ethernet module, choose the RMII interface, enable the global interrupt, generate the project, and to include the library that I was talking about, you just need to go to GitHub and copy only two files. So right here, mongoose GitHub, go to this link, And you'll need these two files, mongoose.c and mongoose.h. I have already downloaded them. And so I'll just paste them in my project. So go to include. And also for the source file. You will also need the config file, so go to include new file and name it mongoose config.h choose a folder in which it will be saved for me it will be it will be in the in folder press finish and now we need to tell the microcontroller that it uses the new lib library so write define mg arch mg arch New lib. Now you will need to macro switch enable the TCP IP stack. So define ng enable me1 and ng define ng enable TCP IP1. You will also need the time based source. So define ng enable. Custom release to one. Now you need to tell the microcontroller which driver it uses. So define mg enable driver STM32F. And now you can just enable the rating of the debug stats with define mg. Enable debug stats. That's it. That's all you need. Now go here and include the libraries.
and build the program to see whether there are problems or not. And we get some errors. It's because of the redefinition of the Ethernet. So just go to the IT file and change the name of the function. I'll put here B. Now build the program again. And we get no errors. At this point, you have everything set up. Now you'll need to declare a manager structure, which basically takes care of any active connection, whether they are inbound, outbound, or listening. So write like this, start ng, ngr manager. Now initialize the manager. And also set the load level. Now let's configure the microcontroller as a simple web server by saying hmg http listen, which takes the address of the manager, then the URI, which will be http 0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0, port 80, then the address of the event handler, which will be called upon any event, and then additional parameters. We don't need them, so just pass none. Now you need an event loop, which constantly is looking for any new events and passes that event to the respective event handler. So, ng, ngr, all. manager and then the timeout let's say 100 milliseconds go back to mongo's config.h and let's declare the ip gateway and the mask tcp ip ipv4 off let's choose an ip Then the gateway, since I have connected my board to a Ethernet to USB converter, I have to input the IP of the converter, 168.137.1. And now for the mask. Now let's declare the event handler and the mg minis, which will be used as a time-based source by the microcontroller. So right here, mg minis, which will return the current tick value. And then the event handler. The first parameter is the connection structure. Then the event ID. And then additional arguments. And now after every HTTP request, let's just respond with a simple HTTP reply. So if event id, ID equal mg event HTTP message, we will just respond. So mg HTTP reply, it, the parameters that it takes are the connection, the status, which is 200, the header, which will be blank, we don't need it for now, the actual payload, which will be, let's say, h1, hello, from mongoose, 
page one. And the size which is 28 bytes. Now let's enable the retargeting, so go to syscalls and copy the write function, such that whenever Mongoose tries to pin something on the screen, it just redirects to UART. So copy the write function, go to main, place it here, and let's just transmit the data, hard UART, transmit UART3, Type test it to a UNT AT type. The size which is len and the timeout which will be 100 milliseconds. Also, there is one more thing to do. We need to reconfigure the Ethernet pins because ST doesn't send them properly. So open the IOC file again and enable the PG11 and PG13 for the Ethernet module. Enable the RMII interface again and set the global interrupt. Generate the code. Go to the interrupt file and change the name again. Now flash the program and open the real time to see what we're getting on the terminal. Now we are assigned this IP, 192.168.137.200. Open the browser and type it. And we're getting hello from Mongoose. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video of learning how to implement a basic web server on STM32. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this framework and whether you'd like to see more complex projects which involve MQTT, UI dashboards and so on. I'll see you guys later.